All right, good morning, good morning, good morning, and once again, welcome to Union Baptist Church, West Blockton. Uh, we welcome you into our 11 o'clock services. Here at Union, we believe we have a word for you. We want you to kick back and relax for this next hour, and where we're going to minister to you in song and in word. And once again, welcome, welcome, welcome. We're going to open up with a song from the choir. And after that, prayer, and after that, we'll go forward with the rest of our program. Good morning. Sit back, get your cup of coffee, something sweet, and get ready for the Word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give us all, Lord. You give all us chance to have again. 
Lord God, I thank you, Lord. I can never thank you enough, Lord. You do nothing else for me, Lord. You've done enough. Guys, the best is church is pastor. You take him, Lord, as you go about his job. You take him, Lord, as you go about sending your message. You take him, Lord, as you give out the word, Lord. You will come to you, Lord. But that you are the answer, Lord. You will protect us. You will protect us from everything that we're going through. We just have a never trust in you, Lord, and believe that you are the answer, that you are the truth to everything that's going on in this world. That the church is the answer. Lord God, we come back to you, Lord. There's going to be a time where we're going to need you, Lord. The time that we come, Lord, we're, we're not going to be able to come to you, Lord. But we're going to be where we have a chance. Yes, Lord. Lord God, thank you for all you've done, Lord. This is a prayer next to your son, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading will come from the book of Micah 6 and 8. Micah 6 and 8. He has shown thee, O man, what is good and what doeth the Lord require of thee but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. The Lord is blessing me right now, Lord, right now. You know the Lord is blessing me. Yes. 
have chosen us to be a life man to a dying world. The body of Christ of feeding to, to a dying world. And we just want to thank you for the opportunity to serve. Thank you. You gave us a man to go. You gave us a man to serve. Yes, you be a Lord. Are you? You just got all in our soul. Got all in our mind. Did you have to do it? But you did, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, we can still be sitting on the side of the road. Still be in the pit of power. Still be in the pit that we should be on the corner. Everything not like you, but you put on the side. All right, and you gave us a heart, you gave us a mind to serve you. We're going to thank you, we bless you, we praise you, we magnify you. Have your way in our life. Look to the north, east, south, and west. Feed, clothe, and shelter. We got an extra. Look upon the sick, the shut in, the bereaved, the homeless, and the homeless. Have your way. Let's everywhere, in every place. Five for the ministry, every church, everywhere. Your body of Christ. Light, light, man. To a damn world. We are a light, man. To a damn world. We are the light in the earth. We are a light. We have a light. They cannot be here. They cannot be put out. We thank you for the Holy Ghost. Our keeper, our comforter. We thank you for Jesus, Father. Our Savior. To the north, east, south, and west. He is a friend in the world. Look upon the sick, shut in, the weed, homes, the lonely, those incarcerated. Look upon this house. Look upon the ladies in this house. The deacon and his wife. Look upon the choir. Everything, everywhere, everybody. Look upon our pastor, God. God strengthen him, keep him. Look upon first ladies everywhere. Our first lady. Everywhere. In the awesome name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. He is blessing me right now.
viewers in this morning. Thank you guys for tuning in and everyone that's uh, waving and speaking. We just give God praise for everything that he is doing. And so we're going to continue uh, in this line of teaching, uh, crossing uh, your wilderness. And we uh, talked about last week that that word wilderness has been translated and uh, printed through that Bible almost over 300 something times. So that let us know even Jesus himself had, had a wilderness experience. And so all of us uh, are dealing, amen, with something. So that's why it's so important uh, that you have a word to give you a, a light, uh, a pathway through uh, these troubling and trying times. We're going to continue to lift up our members, and uh, we just pray for families right now, and we're just giving God praise. In Exodus chapter 22, uh, let's start at verse 20. We're going to look at... Uh, using Israel as an example of cross and wilderness. We're going to draw some things from it today. And so when we look at verse 20, we look at some things that God was telling his people as he prepared to lead them. One of the things we look at uh, in verse 20, he says, Behold, he said, I will I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Amen. So there's a couple of things I want to pull out of that teaching, uh, just dealing with that verse right there. First of all, he tells us uh, the promise of divine help, that angel. So he's telling them that uh, I'm going to send, amen, an angel. Amen. And we talked about that, the theophany of God, is God appearing in physical forms throughout the Old Testament. And here's just one example an angel that goes before them. Uh, it's a pillar of cloud by day and, and a pillar of fire by night, giving them that divine protection. He says, I'm going to protect you because that angel is going to go before you. And so one of the things we look at is that we have divine uh, protection to keep thee. Amen. That, that, that lets us know that what God said is to direct thee. Uh, in the way into which I would have you to go. And then that fourth point when we look at it is that, and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared uh, for thee. There's a prepared place for each of us, amen, that God has with his promises. And one of the things we look at today, I want to talk about today uh, what we look at, and I'm going to use some scriptures, but I want to kind of just get right into it, is that I want to talk about battles and blessings. Okay, okay. Battles and blessings. And this is one of the things we look at. One of the things uh, we look at is that uh, when we look at the promises of God, and I just like to use this little uh, uh, teaching here when we look at Israel, is that Israel was between blessings. That's right. We are too. Yeah, yeah and we are too. Yeah. Yes, man, we yeah. are. Because what we look at, we look at their current situation in, according to this teaching, yeah. uh, when we look at it. They, uh, Israel uh, was out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And they were not yet in their promised land. Uh -huh. So that means that they was, on, they was on a journey. That's it. Between blessings. Their current situation was that we are out of Egypt, but we hadn't quite grabbed hold of the blessings. But God had informed them before they even began this wilderness journey that he had a place prepared for them. A lot of times, walking with God, we know the end results, but it's the actual walk through. Amen. That we have to grow in in faith to trust God. That that walk the process. Amen. The one of the things that these people had to learn was that from Egypt to Canaan to the Promised Land was a process, and that process was based on their their faith. And here, when we look at uh, uh, their crossing, Amen, and coming out of Egypt, they they was in between, Amen, uh, their blessings. Yeah. They was in between the promises. And they was coming out of their current situation. They was crossing their wilderness. And, and that's something that 
all of us, amen, one of the things God will do is won't surprise us. That's right. And when he said he's going to do something, he's going to do it. And he sort of lets us know ahead of time in some strange form, fashion, or way about what, amen, is going to happen. And one of the things he told them in, in, in Exodus chapter 23 is that now one of the things I'm not going to uh, uh, have you wander aimlessly through the wilderness. I'm going to send you a divine protect. We have angels that watch over us. And this angel is going to lead us and keep us and, and direct us. And so he was teaching them, amen, to trust him. God, we find ourselves today, this wilderness that we're in, uh, we want to call it a pandemic. Yeah. Joblessness. Yeah. Amen. Death. Amen. Sickness. Amen. Yeah. Plague. Amen. So we're, we're in the midst, but we're in a blessed place. Yeah. One of the things about uh, the children of Israel was that, but we're going to look at this, I'm going to use this as a pattern, is that uh, they was in the place of on their way to the place that God had prepared for them, but they couldn't see it, amen, for the traffic that was taking place, the, the, the distraction that was taking place. And God, he wants us, amen, to, to understand, amen, about, amen, that, that even though he has promises for us, amen, and, and he does, amen, that there are battles and there's blessings, amen. And those battles and blessings, they work together to teach us, amen, faith about the God that we serve. And so here, we're one of the most blessed people in the world, but we're in a battle. And that your faith is on the line. You can give up, amen, or you can give out, amen. But the thing is that he that that that, that lasts to the end, amen, endure it, amen. And so here's some things that I'm talking about to see that I want to help us as we move forward when we see uh, uh talking about battles and blessings. Some things are worth fighting for, yeah. like your life and your family. And I want to use these people as an example. Let's look at, uh, if you got your Bible, you know, uh, let's go to uh, Numbers chapter 13. Okay. Numbers chapter 13. Mm -hmm. Sometimes God has a way of showing you, amen, and allowing you, amen, to see Amen. Your blessings. Amen. That's right. And you know, we have to see it in the daytime by faith. That's right. But God gave him actually a physical walkthrough. Amen. To what he had promised them. But the thing about it was that they didn't believe in faith what they saw with their own eyes. And we got better promises. And so the thing about that with us is that we, we, we have to see it, amen, by faith based on what Christ has done on our behalf. That's it's right. a secure deal. This, this is the promise of God that he will send us, amen, amen, his son Jesus. And so one of the things we look at when we talk about crossing our wilderness and we talk about battles and blessings is that those battles only come to strengthen us. Uh, the devil don't want you, amen, to possess nothing that God has for you. And he's going to put up obstacles, he's going to put up walls, he's going to put up anything that will keep you from believing and attaining, amen, what God has for you. God has not turned this world over to the enemy, he has not turned it over to me, he's still large and in charge. But one of the things God wants us to understand is that he wants our attention as his people, he wants us back, amen, to worshiping him and not other things. Look at this, amen, uh, when we look at uh, uh, Numbers chapter 13. And here's God still uh, speaking to his leader Moses, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send out men mm -hmm. that they may search the land of Canaan, Numbers chapter 13, which I give unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their father shall you send a man, every one a ruler among them. Now, what I like about this, you have to look at the meat of what's happening right here in this verse is that God said, gather the elder leaders, leaders that's right. of each tribe, uh, 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 men of honor, that people of credibility, that, that the people in their tribe will honor and value their opinion. It's so important. Peace, it's so important that we understand that when we talk about uh, leadership and we talk about crossing the wilderness, it's an inclusive thing if you are a leader because you know, what you say and what you do make a big difference in how people lead or follow you. So he's telling them, he said that now, because what I have for you, amen, he's telling them, he said now, I'm going to send you uh, uh, into the promised land, but I'm going to give you a, a, a sneak preview, but I want it to be from credible people, amen, so that when they go back 
See, what we say or what we do makes a difference amongst our other members. Amen. That, that they'll be able to believe that soon, even right now, that we'll get back together as a church, as a family. We begin to pray for one another. All is going to be, amen, well, when we begin to trust God. We're in what we call a new normal, so we have to learn how to do things uh, differently. Right. But the thing is that we have to have good leadership to lead us into this. So he tells them uh, a ruler, a leader amongst every one of them. And what Moses did, he gathered one of each tribe. Amen. In Numbers chapter 13. And then and what he told them to do, he said, now, uh, under God's permission, he tells them to go and spy out the land. Uh-huh. Now, I'll tell you, it don't get no better than that. You know, he, don't, he really, uh, you know, when we talk about grace and mercy, God really didn't have to do that. Because he did a love when he opened up the Red Sea. Right. He right. did enough, amen, when, when he had plagues in Egypt. He really did enough when he uh, uh, closed in the walls of Pharaoh's army. So he really didn't have to do nothing more spectacular to prove, amen, that he was capable of taking care of them. Now, we, today, when we look at that and talk about divine protection, we didn't just get up, amen, because the sun hit us in the face of the long clock. We got up because of the grace of God. Amen. We, we, we're still alive and healthy. It's all because of the grace of God. And even, amen, if we get up there and we're sick, that mercy of God is an add-on to the grace of God that will see you, amen, until God heal you. Amen. So we want to believe God. When you believe God, you got to believe God a hundred. Got to be a hundred with God because He'll do what He said He'll do, but He'll allow things to happen. Amen. It's not because of what you did or didn't do; it's because He's God. Amen. And so He's telling them when He said, "Go out and spy the land." They went out. Amen. According to Numbers chapter thirteen, they went through the land. Amen. They went southward up into the mountain. They they went. Everywhere, and they searched, and 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 he went. And uh, let's look at verse twenty in Romans chapter thirteen. And it said, "And what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood therein or not, this I like this. And be ye of good courage, and bring the fruits of the land. Now the time." was the time of the first strike grapes. Ain't that something? That's right. He said, go in there and see what's in the land that God had been talking about. Really? See if, if it's yeah. right. Yeah. See if the city is like he said it was going to be. See if the land good or bad. Give me, and you know what? I, now, I, I, I'm, I'm tripping right now, but ain't it amazing how God said, give me your opinion on something that yeah. I have already did. Yeah. Yeah. Man, ain't that something? <laughs> How, you know, how he accused us of stuff that he didn't already did. He said, now, see, because of the fact that your opinion means a lot to God, but at the same time, uh, your opinion, if it's in agreement with who God is, it's nothing but a blessing. And then, so he said, go ahead and look for yourself and come back and tell me. See, God's so big that he can take negativity, and then he can take you not doing it, but the thing about what he can't take is you're not believing in him. See what I see, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ain't that so, so when we talk about battles and blessings, amen, that, that you have to fight, amen, for what God has for you. So he said, verse 21, they went up and searched the land from the wilderness of Zen to unto Rehob, as men come to Hamak, and as they ascended by the south, they came up to Hebron, they went through the land. And verse 23 said, and they came unto the brook Eskar and cut down from thence a bridge. With one cluster of grapes, and they buried between upon two upon a staff, and they brought of the plum pomegranate, gr- uh, pomegranate, <laughs> and of the fig. They brought back evidence. What I'm trying to say. Yeah. So they brought back evidence, and, and when they returned, they had been in that for forty days. It's something about that number forty. Searching the land, they brought back evidence of what God had did. Now, this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where your battle and your blessing. They went over and they, they saw the blessing. Yeah. But the thing was, it was a battle that had to take place, amen, for the blessing. 
But the battle was already won because God had went before them. Yes. But the thing is that it's their opinion, amen, of what God had did that caused so much confusion. It's because it goes, it falls down to this what you say and how you say it make a big difference in whether people are going to believe God yes. or not. Amen. How how you present God, amen. How you present God's case, how you present the situation that we're in. We can look at this situation that we're in today as a curse. We can look at it as end time. We can look at it as God punishing us. But then how about looking at it as God is giving our attention and bring us back to us because we are in a covenant relationship with him? How about God is calling the church back? To be the church again. Yes. How about God is saying that maybe if we release amen, some of the things that we're worshiping to begin to worship Him again, that He'll remove amen, the curse that's upon the land. Maybe if we trust God a little more, amen, that sooner or later we'll be able to stand tall and walk in the blessings because God had changed His mind about blessing us, amen, but He allowed things to happen to let us understand that if you want this blessing, there's a battle, amen, going on in your life right Right now. A lot of folks are dealing with sickness. A lot of folks are dealing with joblessness. But the thing is that it does not amen, deny you from being blessed by God. God didn't bless you based on where you work. He didn't bless you based on your color. He didn't bless you based on the degree you have. He didn't bless you based on the family that you came from. He blessed you based on you believing in what he did in his son Jesus Christ. And so he's telling them and he said, now I want you to take these 12 men, go over and look and see what I have for you. And don't worry about amen, what's in the land. You just worry about I gave you the land because this was a promise amen, a long time ago. We got promises. Amen. That's I'm trying to make it clear for us today that God has given us and he's not going to let no sickness or death or anything uh, hinder us from getting what God wants us to do. Sometimes he'll take us the long way around. He took these people the long way around because he knew where their faith level was. He'll take us through a pandemic. He'll take us through homelessness. He'll take us through jobless just to show us that he's still able to take care of us. Sometimes we have so much that we think we're taking care of ourselves. And so God had to lower the standard in order to raise us up to a position to worship him. And so this is what we're talking about balance and blessing. We 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 have the blessing, but there's a battle, amen, because the enemy who is the devil don't want us to have what God has for us. Listen to this. And so uh, let's look at the opinion of men. It was verse 26. And they and they went and came to Moses. Now I, I just don't understand. You know, James Peter had a song that said, uh had, some people still cry and have a loaf of bread under their hand. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and crying with a loaf of bread. You got food to eat and you still crying. They came back with pomegranates and grapes and, and all kinds of food. They sit down and they, with, with the evidence in their head. And, so, and when they came back to Moses and Aaron to the congregation of the children and, and unto the wilderness of Pradesh to Kadesh, uh, Kadesh and brought back word unto them and to all the congregation and showed them. Show them. Showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him, they said, We came into the land, whether thou sent us, and surely it flows with milk and honey. And this is the fruit, this is the evidence of it. He said, But nevertheless, you have to be careful about that nevertheless. He said, Nevertheless, the people. Face the problem, brother. Come on. The people be strong that dwell in the land. Now, one of the things. About this is that God showed them. That's right. If you went that far today, and no strong people hadn't bothered you or touched you right. or hindered you, then you know you got divine protection. Amen. Right. If you get up in the morning, they and you still have to, that's because God is watching over you, you got purpose. And so they come back and say, But the people, I mean images, amen, can, can mess us up sometimes. Perception, amen. And one of the things about perception is that you're gonna either see things through the eyes of faith or you're gonna see things through the eyes of fear, amen. And fear breaks along doubt and unbelief, and it'll rob you, amen, of your promise, amen. It'll rob you, amen, of the destiny that God has for you. It'll rob you of your place that God has you. Now, things happen, amen. This is why we have to pray the strong pray for the weak. So he tells them, he said, now, surely it's for them, but nevertheless, it's people in the land. Lord, you didn't tell us about people being there. Uh -oh. So I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I got that kind of 
Yeah, I guess they just thought they would walk right in and nobody would be there. You know, but the thing about it, that's a way. But he didn't say nothing about the people. And he said, but hey, they're not weak, they're strong. Well, of course they're strong. It's because they're eating good. Yeah. They're eating good in the land. And they dwell in the land. And the cities are wall and very great. It looks like they fortified. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. Now, those are children that 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 from ancient times. You know, they're they're the cities and, and and strong and powerful and big. And so, see size and it, uh, it makes a difference. But it shouldn't scare you when you walk with God. Right. Let me put That's it right. like that. Amen. You should you should let amen that influence who God is over your life. Wrong. You know, even the size of this worldwide thing that we're dealing with, it's still not bigger That's than right. who God is. That's amen. Right. So the thing about it was that they were looking at it through the eyes of men and not looking at it through the eyes of God. So the battle, amen, that blesses, amen. Sometimes how we see things hinders, amen, what God right. has for us. And so he tells them, so they begin to talk about the people that Amalekite dwell in the lands, the Hittite, the Jebusite, the Amalekite. But you know, they start looking at the people that was in the land, but, oh, but God brother, brother, brother. focus was not on the people hey. in the land. I would focus, amen. Yeah. It shouldn't be on, amen, who's going to lead us into the next century. I would focus, it's important, amen, that we, and we have to make wise choices. Right. But the bottom line is that, amen, at the end of the day, we still have to learn to trust God. And so right. he tells them about the people that dwell in, and so, and, and he says that, and they're giants in the land. But, is where I'm at. And Caleb stealed the people before Moses and said, that's faith speaking, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Ain't that something? That's it. That's it. He said, let us go home. He's speaking faith. faith. He saw for himself the people in the land. Leadership. Yes. But what he did also see was that God's word was good. Yeah. He knew God was good for him. He said, man, we're well able. Yeah, because right. of the fact that everything yeah. that God said was true, was true. Yeah. So he said that now, uh, let us go up and possess it. We are well able to possess it. But the men that was with him, when we talk about the majority rule, you have to be careful sometimes about the majority rule because sometimes the majority can be wrong. And if they don't see things the way you see things in God's eyesight, then it, that can be wrong. You know, so in this situation right here, they say that we're not able. They were looking at their own strength. And then he said that we're not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than us. So in other words, they gave the people, amen, more strength than they gave their God, who led them. Now, based on what God had already done for them, if he wiped out all of Egypt's army just about, amen, don't you know he can take care of those people that's walking around through that land? So when you begin to fight, you have to learn to fight in the spirit, amen. So he was telling them, we're well able, and because of how the people look in the first impression, he, they gave a bad report, and because they gave a bad report, the people, amen, in the land, amen, they mourn. Mm -hmm. Ain't that something? Now, I want you to turn with me to number 14 because I'm going to shift gears in a minute. I'm, 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 I'm talking about, amen, the blessings. All right. The, their blessings was before them. Yes, sir. Their blessings was within reach. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many of you out there, if your blessings are within reach, but yes, you're sir. standing, amen, in your wilderness. And, and, and the whole topic of these messages is to have to cross over, amen, into your promises. And the thing about that is that whatever your wilderness is, you have to cross over in faith. You have to cross over trusting in God. And, and you can't let a bad report, amen, hinder you from what God is doing. And one of the things about this was that, now, this thing came, uh, I want you to see this in the list, it came from amongst themselves. Ain't that something? That's it. Perception can fool you. Yes, sir. One of the things, um, and I know Tyler understands about it now, it's about being a male person, is that when you see a dog, uh -huh. a big dog, <laughs> 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 one is scary, 
and look at me. Uh-huh. That's your perception. perception. Because it's a dog, and dogs are, they bite people. Come but on. once you get, oh, only you find out it's just, most of them, a puppy. Yeah. Just as gentle. Um, yeah. And what it does, it hinders you from being all you can be or getting to your destination because of how it look. That's right. These people, because of how the people look, they value how they look over what God said they can have. That's right. A lot of times in life, because of who you are, uh-huh. you don't reach out for the things of God because you're worried about what the people what don't the people say. Gonna say. Oh, A lot of times, oh. failure is not failure, it's unbelief. Yes. Yeah. Because when you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, yeah. it don't matter what it looks like. That's right. All that matters is who got your back. So as you walk through this life and through this pandemic, you have to understand that no matter how it looks, amen, if God is for me, who can be against me? That's Look at this in 14. So they begin to understand this. They say, and the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and all the people wept that night, 14 verse 1. Why would they be crying about a blessing? That's right. He said that the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Abel in the whole and said unto them, With God that we have died in the land of Egypt, or with God that we have died in this wilderness. See, a lot of times people are dying in their wilderness because of the fact that they're afraid to go to the next level in God. Right. And then my blessing is God says for me, I'm gonna fight for you. You got to fight for what God has yeah. given me. It's because the devil don't want you to have people don't want you to have it. They'll talk about you, they'll talk about where you came from. They'll talk about your past. They'll talk about your family. But the thing about it is that what God has for you, it's for you. And so they had to realize these were blessed people. And they being afraid of what men look like. And he said that they decided that let us go back to Egypt. A lot of us revert back to the familiar. It's because we're afraid to step out on faith in who God is. You miss your blessing. You leave your blessings on the table because you worry about what somebody else. I'm going to tell you personally, I have failed at things so many times. And, then, and I wouldn't worry about what people were going to say about me. All I know is that nothing be a failure, you're going to try. And then, that's been my motto all my life. Is that nothing be a failure, you're going to try. As long as you're trying, you're win. But the moment that you stop trying, failure takes over. And what you're saying is that you have to understand that with God you can do all things. That's what they said let us with two men and two valued opinions in verse 6. Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephthah, they were of men that searched the land and rent their clothes, seven cents, and they spake unto all the company of people, saying, The land in which we passed through to search it is an exceedingly good land. And if the Lord did like in us, then he would bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which floated with milk and honey. Only rebel ye not against the Lord, neither ye fear the people of the land, for they are bread for us. That's how you have to see your own. It's food for thought. Amen. You have to see them as stepping stones to get you to the next level. You have to see them, amen, as blessings to get you to your promised land. You have to see them, amen, as trials and tribulations to help you grow, amen, into the things of God. Nothing in this world comes easy, but everything comes, amen, when you learn to trust in who God is. Now what I want to do, I'm going to take these last few minutes, I'm going to encourage you, amen, into the things of God, even as we walk through this thing, we know, amen, that it's rough right now, but the thing is that you have to change your mindset, the battle begins in your mind, amen, the blessings are there, but there's a battle for your blessings, and the battle begins in your mind, but God has given you everything that you need to help your mind be like the mind of Christ. And that is him, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Who rest, rule, and abide in us. We don't have a divine angel on the boat. Angels are all around. We have the Holy Spirit who's in us. Amen. To guide us and teach us and encourage us into the things of God. Look at this. Amen. Romans 5. Let's go there real quick. Romans 5. 
and then let's look at this. If you write this scripture down, Romans 5, and then I want to encourage you in your faith as you begin to cross into your wilderness. Listen to this. You have to understand, and then this starts with you. Don't worry about what people say about you. Don't worry about your position in life. Don't even worry about your job. If you're a janitor sweeping, you make sure you be the best janitor sweeping in that every area that you sweep. If you clean it in time, that folk can eat off the floor. That, that's pride in who you are. That's your guilt. Amen. If you got to clean up bathroom, you make sure that when they go in the bathroom, they won't stay in there all day long. It smells so good. Amen. You have to understand whatever you do, if you serve, amen, you serve the best that you can. Amen. So people can understand that you walk with God. Listen to this. Verse one, number one. You have to understand that you are in peace with, right. with God. That's right. Therefore, Romans chapter 5. Yes, sir. Therefore, being justified mm. by faith, mm -hmm. we have peace with God yeah. through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, let, let me exegete that. One of the things is that God is not mad at you because he's happy and satisfied with what Christ has done on your behalf. No. You gotta understand this peace don't come and then when God coming down and seeking a peace treaty, this peace came with his sacrificial death, amen, and resurrection that God has solidified and validated, amen, that we are now connected back to yes. our love source. Yes. I said love source, love source, and then Jesus. To, to the Father. That's what Jesus has done for us. And he tells us now that we have, uh, uh, God is at peace with us. He said, now what you have to understand, verse 2, is that now you have access. That's it, right there. Yeah. 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 By whom we also have access. But this access is like anything else. You need a car to get in, but your access is by faith. That's right. The enemy, your battle, begins in your life. If you don't have the faith that it takes, and then you'll miss out on your blessing, on your promise. So he said you got access by faith into this grace wherein we stay. You don't even know that we stand in grace. Right. So he tells us that this grace that we stand in, he said, and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. He says that now you have to understand, now it is so, but we glory in tribulation. There you go, glory. My, 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 in the wilderness. There you go, we yes. glory in yes. tribulation. Yes. How can you glory in your troubles? And then how can you glory when your world is going down? You glory because God is mad at me. This is just a test, amen. And I'm going to come through all right because God is for me. And I'm at peace with him because of what Jesus has done. That's why he led us and told us that through our Lord Jesus Christ, we got access, but you have to apply and in your faith to have access that with tribulation, you have to look at tribulation and say, okay, what tribulation is going to teach me is patience. And what I like about the scripture, he said it working, patience. That means it's active. Yes, yes. Tribulation, flip the script on tribulation. Don't always look at trouble as being trouble. Look at it as being a blessing. And then, that's all uh, Paul said. You have to look at how it's working. Now, when you talk about working and being active, that means that it produces something. And it produces, I mean, your trouble is producing patience. Yes, sir. And patience. Oh, I love this. Come on. Ain't that something he said now? Look at it. And patient experience. There you go. My, my, my. What patient will teach you is to learn the way of God. What patient can teach you is that this ain't just happening to you, it can happen to a whole lot of other folks. What patient is teaching you is that God is showing you, and one thing about experience, it makes you do things a whole lot better, Lord. Most jobs, before we get on and say, do you have any kind of experience? I got a lot of faith experience. I've failed on a lot of stuff, so I know what it's going to take, and I know what it's not going to take. But I do what it's going to take, believing and trusting in God. And, and that's why he said, your faith encourages it, it, it brings about experience. And what experience does, amen, it brings about hope. Man, uh -huh. if you want hope, uh -huh. flip the script on tribulation. Uh -huh. It teaches you, amen, about who God is. And so he tells us that it's what hope does. You got to get this. Yeah. Make it not a shame. Not a shame. Hmm. And that's all 
come down and there's some good news. That means that even if I fail, I will feel bad about it. Even if they talk about what I did, I will feel bad about it. Even if they talk about where I come from, yeah. maybe, I will feel bad about it. Hey. Even if I didn't get what I thought I was going to get, I won't feel bad if I hope won't oh. make me ashamed. All it did is gave me experience and it's going to make me try even harder. Yeah. If at first you don't succeed, try try again. And then nothing did fail but try. And then so he tells them, and what happens, he says that now, and hope make it not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. Ain't that something? One more to fight with. You're in a battle. Yeah. James chapter 1. There you go. There you go right there. James yeah. chapter 1. That's it. James. Brother. Let's look at what James is talking about. Yeah. Jesus' brother. Yeah. James was considered an elder of uh -huh. the church. He was uh -huh. one of the first when you look at those those uh, 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 disciples and stuff that watched that 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 over the church. He was man. He he was a man of credibility. You got to look at the person of who James is. James spoke about a lot of issues, but James understood exactly about trials and tribulation. And one of the things we look at when we look at James, he teaches us how to rejoice on the trial. See, this is, this is, all I'm telling us is that while we're in the situation that we're in, we have to learn how to rejoice in right. where we are at right now. And that's why, that's where the battle begins. Your blessings, I'm going to show you something. Uh, your blessings is not going nowhere. That's right. It's not the it's still there. Already there. It's right where you left it when you right, stop believing God. God promises. Come on. It's right there in that spot, yeah. amen, where you walked away from That's God. Right. Your blessing, amen. And if you don't go back and get it, somebody else is going to get it. That's right. Now, I don't know about you, but I, I just can't stand to see somebody walk around with my blessing. It's it, it, it just like you saw a coat. Amen. And it was on sale, and you had the money, and you said, well, I'm going to wait till tomorrow. If it's here, then it's for me. Well, if it's here, and it's on sale, and you got the money in your pocket, it's for you. <laughs> <laughs> what you going to do, you're going to walk away from it, and you come here tomorrow, and somebody got it. The first thing you say, well, God didn't want me to have it. No, God said, no, I put it on sale for you to have it. <laughs> You didn't know. Amen. Yeah. So he said this. So you can't blame God. God said, there's no sale. And now you did I remember what time I was getting to the real quick. I'm going to close out. Uh, I was at the mall before they closed. And, and, and there were shoes on sale. Uh -huh. Flotions. Uh, uh, man, all kinds of nice, different colors. Oh, and when I walked in, uh, they were all on sale. And so the thing was that I was wondering why everybody was around looking and fussing because the shoes that was on sale were one size. It was eight and a half because they had so many. It wasn't a lot of eight and a half feet. But guess who had an eight and a half feet? <laughs> <laughs> so when I walked in, the guy was coming up and said, these on sale. And, they got, Ooh, eight and, a half, eight. and he said, he said uh, yeah, they on sale. I said, well, if they on sale, and uh, and I uh, buy this one. I said, how much would I get if I bought two? And he said, well, if you get two, it'll be in this for this price. I said, what if I bought three? He said, well, if you bought three, I can get it. I said, what if I bought four? <laughs> you know, because of the fact that I had walked into a place. I walked out there about six. I mean, <laughs> It was nothing but a blessing. I mean, I walked out of there, everybody was looking, they were mad. You know, she was about $40 to $50. I walked out of there less than $100 with six pounds of flow, different clothes. And that was nothing but a blessing because it was just in my side. But if I would sit there and say, you know what, I'm going to come back tomorrow. But that's the year there. You know, some folks come out, that sale still up. We better move when the Spirit said move, ain't it? And so, you know, they get that blessing because if you walk away, somebody, a mother ain't in a hand with a walking out, I've been so mad. That young was walking out on a short pair of blue flushes on her. And that, I, that's my best lesson. So the thing is that, you know, you have to move with the spirit set. Yeah. So here in James, he tells us, amen, you have to learn to rejoice, amen. Only the thing he said that, now listen to this. He said that, my brother, in verse 2, count it all joy. Come on. That's it. When you fall in Bible temptation. He said that you need to learn how to flip the script on your troubles. Count it all joy because God is still working out. I mean, I got a lot of work I need to be doing. I come out with joy, amen, because he's working. He said that knowing this, that see, this trouble is a trial of your faith. And when faith, but look at that, he said the same thing. Your faith working patience. Mm. Why are you in a hurry to put people back in danger? Why are you in a hurry 
to do things that endanger others. Let your faith give you patience. He said, let me show you something about God. He said, let patience, let patience have her. He put it in the form of the woman. Her patient work. Her perfect work. That he may be perfect at a time, Lord, in this. See, when you learn to wait on God and give God and walk with God, you won't be hurt or wounded for nothing. He said, if any of you lack will, the patient brings about will, so the patient allows you to have will. So he said, let him not ask of God that he give it out to all men. And then he said, ask of God to give it all men liberally, and I'm ready not in this shall be given. If you're looking for instruction, Seek God. Jesus. And he said that if you love you lack action, but if you let him ask in faith. Verse 6. Not wavering. For he that wavering is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A devil-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Man, I need to stop right there because we're getting ready to close out. But listen, uh, I'm going to give one more lesson. I just had to get battles and blessings out. We're in a battle, but I want you guys to know that the battle begins in your mind. You have to reassure yourself that God is for you and not against you, that you're healed and not sick, and that God has your best interest, amen, in mind. And what faith does, it teaches us to walk, amen, and trust God, and to believe in God, and to give God glory for all that he, or he is doing uh, in this life. And one of the things, amen, I'm believing God for is the patience and the experience to guide his people safely back into the sanctuary. Amen. We're still closed right now because of the fact that the count is still going up in the county because of the fact that people are still getting sick. And I love my people. Amen. More I care about their lives than their present right now. And so if they can just endure and wait to this trial, we're going to be all right. We're going to come out this thing smelling real good. But for right now, we're going to trust and believe God and let patience have her perfect. We walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. So hopefully, I hope you want to, you can receive this today. I got one more lesson, and we're going to close out this series. If you want to get a copy of these series, amen, write us at Post Office Box 381, West Blockton, Alabama, 35184. Uh, you can call us on Sunday morning, 205-938-7722. Or call me, hit me up on my cell phone, 205, amen, 434-5905. Uh, this is a four-part series. I got one more left, and we're in the third lesson. And we'll be more than happy to give you a copy uh, of this series at a reasonable uh, price. If you call and let us know that these series will help walk you through what you're dealing with right now. We all have wilderness experiences, and these words will help you. And so we thank God for all that he's doing. And if you don't know Jesus Christ for your free pardon of your sin, let me get you to pray with me. Uh, Father God, we give you glory for who you are. We love you. We magnify you. We praise you. For those who are watching today, Father God, if they don't know you for the free part of their sin, uh, let me get you to surrender right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And just repeat after me, Father God, I believe that you are the Christ and that you died for my sins and that you was raised on the third day with all power. Now, Lord, do a work in me like you've never done before. I love you and magnify you and I praise you, Lord. I open up the doors of my heart to receive you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you repeated that prayer after me, uh, get into a nice uh, Bible teaching, amen, service somewhere online, and believe God. Amen. And as I always say, amen, join us on Thursdays, uh, 7.30, as we continue in our uh, Thursday evening Bible study. And so as we close out, we want to tell you to be blessed. And we always remember, uh, pray for you, you pray for me, and let's watch God change things. And so be blessed, and we're going to continue to pray for our country and for our people. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen.